Hey everyone, thank you for joining us for our final 10 9 day periscope of the day. And today on your left we have Matt Chesham and on the right Tom Senge. Yeah. And they will be talking about tips and tricks for shooting. So please send us your questions, send them your questions so we can help get some tips out of these guys to help you become a better shooter. So um, how about, let's start off with how you got each got started in the sport. Well, I got started <laughs> uh, when I was 10 years old at a local junior club back in New Hampshire. Uh, I shot there. Uh, my dad introduced me into the sport um, and I kind of carried it through high school and college and came here to be a resident and be on the national team. I started shooting international style in 2009. I was 14. I was shooting previously, I was shooting high power in California, and I took that kind of as far as I wanted to, went to nationals. We set a few records as a team, and then I started shooting this. We actually have more 600 yard ranges in Southern California than 10 meter ranges. So I ended up cutting a hole in my wall at my house so I could shoot 10 meters and train at home. And then I went to school, and right now I'm taking a year off of school to train here at the Olympic Training Center. Okay, so both of these guys are rifle shooters, and maybe can you tell the good folks out there, uh, if they want to get started in shooting, how should they go about it? The uh, best way is to find a local club, either through 4-H, CMP, USA Shooting. There's a lot of local clubs that have startup programs, and a lot of them will have gear that they can lend you or let you use while you're there. I, I would say I felt the same thing. There's, uh, I know a few people have got in through uh, JROTC or ROTC, and also um, some people start later and, and they don't get into it in college. There's a lot of really good college schools that have really good rifle programs. Okay. Yep. Well, we had a question for Tom. Someone <laughs> knows you very well. They know you have a wife and a kid and you're training. How do you balance all of it? It's, it's hard to balance all that. Um, it, it really takes a good schedule. You gotta, you gotta write everything down, get it organized, and stick to uh, the schedule and, and allow time to, to go with all of it. So it's, it's hard. <laughs> Sorry, we're getting some questions about Royal Crest eggnog if you get it delivered to your door. <laughs> yes, that is the key, actually. <laughs> the key to good shooting? Yes. Eggnog. Okay. <laughs> How about, um, how do you manage pre-match nerves? Uh, there are a lot of different ways to do it. Uh, definitely breathing, learning to deep breathe and do that in the match before the match. Do some visualization beforehand so you're prepared for all the different circumstances and then going in confident and just following your plan. Yeah, I would, I would, uh, the planning is definitely the thing you need to have. You gotta, Write it out, stick to it, do it every day. And sorry if we're paraphrasing this question, but we had one earlier about, is it harder to recover from a bad shot or to keep it going after a perfect shot? Hmm. Um, I, I, for me personally, I, I don't think there's that much of a difference. I think the bad shot, um, you gotta let that one go just as much as you gotta let the 10-9 the go. You know that if you dwell on a bad shot, you're you're likely going to be distracted for the next one. Mm -hmm. And the same thing goes with you shoot a you know shoot a good shot, um, and you're thinking, well, I've got eight or nine really solid X's in a row. Um, and if you're thinking about that instead of just working your process one shot at a time and keep focused on that one shot at a time, then you'll you'll shoot better. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, are exactly you, what he said. <laughs> are you involved in any other shooting sports, either as fun or to supplement your training? I, I occasionally shoot air pistol. Uh, I think it's fun. It, it is very good trigger control, um, for sure. Uh, since I recently broke my ankle, I've been training a little air pistol on the side just to keep my trigger control and hold acceptance you know, on, on par. So. But other than that, not so much. Every once in a while when I go home, I'll shoot some pistols or some ARs, that kind of thing. Okay, well then what can some people do to help strengthen their mental game? Oh, 
the mental game is always the toughest one uh, for a lot of people, me included. <laughs> I yeah. would uh, I would strengthen it by um, really thinking about what is causing you to have the struggles. Is it a uh, fear of succeeding or a fear of failure? Um, and look at that, analyze those, and then go into ways that you can work on one of those, like either live on the positive that you're going to do well and you're going to keep shooting well and keep your mind keep your mind positive. Some of the best advice I've ever received mental training wise is just living the life that you want to be, like where you want to be in the sport, just already live like that, live like a champion. So get up early, train early, work out, eat well, sleep, just the whole gamut. If you do all of that, it really helps with your confidence when you step onto the range, knowing that you've done everything that you can to help where you're going. Well, someone wants to know, who are your biggest cheerleaders? Mine would probably be my family, uh, wife, and my little daughter. She can't really cheerlead, but she's, <laughs> she's only a month, uh, 16 months old, but yeah, they support me a lot. Yeah, definitely my family. I couldn't do it without my family. And definitely a lot of my teammates here at the training center, and especially back at school at University of Akron. Uh, can't, I got to feed off of them, and they help me a lot. Okay, and we also had someone who was asking about, do you have a shot plan you follow for every single shot? Yes. 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 <laughs> it's, I, think, I think everybody at this level has a shot plan, and the ones that do the best are the ones that follow it the most often or as close to every time as you can. Yeah, absolutely. Every shot. Well, someone asked, is there a way to deal with being, I believe it was, left eye dominant but right handed? in shooting yeah there's a couple different ways you can yeah. you can uh, sh just shoot left-handed and use your left eye if it's that much different um, it'll take longer or it'll take less time for you to figure out how to shoot left hand than it would to train your eyes to mm -hmm. switch to right eye dominant um, or you can um, use a really good blinder and shoot right eye dominant you shoot yeah. with your right eye and they also make this gadget that allows you to shoot right-handed and moves your sights over to the left side. So you're looking through the sights with your left eye, but you're holding the rifle with your right hand. Well, someone asked if we were going to do some scopes of folks shooting here. Um, not in our series right now, but we have training going on all day today, so we will definitely try to bring you some footage of how folks train right here. So hope that helps you out. Do we have any more questions before we close out this scope for today. I know these guys are big geeks about taking care of your gun well. Maybe how about what can people do to make sure they have a good working firearm? Clean it every day. Every day. Every time you shoot. <laughs> I, I like to clean after uh, after I get done shooting small yeah, me more. Too. Um, for a couple of reasons. One, that everything's warm in the barrel. It's easier to clean. It'll clean faster. Um, and then it's ready for the next day. So the next day I can go in and start training. I don't have to spend any time cleaning. Yep, uh, pretty much that. I use a brush every day, use solvents, just the whole whole nine yards, clean my tube, clean my bolt, re-oil re everything. I do not clean my air rifle that often. I no. clean it like every 10, which is a lot. <laughs> yeah, I don't clean the air gun very much. <laughs> <laughs> Well, how about you've talked about what you do in the gym and what you do training-wise. Do you want to talk about the nutrition that's important for <laughs> shooters? Yeah, I, I, I can do that. So <laughs> one, of the, one of the key things for nutrition-wise is keeping your blood sugar even. Uh, so if you start breakfast before the match, you know, one, one to three hours before the match, eat a breakfast of uh, whole grains, uh, fruit, so a little bit of protein, so like an egg or some yogurt. And then throughout your match, have a plan and try it ahead of time in training about what you need to eat. So like a, a bar, like a cliff bar or an energy bar throughout the match. My coach really liked eating bananas, like half a banana through a match. And I drink a, a diluted sports drink to help keep my blood sugar up to where I need it to be. It also helps keep me hydrated, which is super important, especially down at Fort Benning. Or if you're up here at the elevation and you're not used to it, you need to be hydrated. Yeah, I also just add like planning your hydration. If you know you're going to be traveling someplace where it's going to be a lot hotter or a lot drier, 
Uh, you you don't start after you get there. You, that starts before you leave. Yeah, so if I'm leaving Ohio and coming here where it's higher in elevation, I will like hyperhydrate essentially the few days beforehand, drink a whole bunch of water, and then on the flight here, drink a whole bunch of water. All my neighbors hate me on the flight, <laughs> getting up and down a lot. But then once you get here, just staying hydrated, super important. All right, well, hey, thank you. Tom and Matt for mm -hmm. talking with us and thank you all for tuning in. We hope you have a great 10-9 day and we'll try and bring you some scopes of our folks shooting here because I mean that's really what you want to see. So thank you again. Happy 10-9 day and we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.